Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be walking you through your pantomime day two assignment. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be sharing my screen with you guys like I always do so that you can see um, every step of what I am doing. And so I'm going to go ahead and get to our assignment the way it looks for you guys. And so when you open up your assignment, it'll be a purple background and it will be called Intro to Pantomime 2. If you're watching this video, that means you probably have already found the assignment and you're doing great. So we're gonna start with our same three questions that we always start with for um, school email. Your theater class period. This can be found at the top of your Google Classroom next to where it says uh, theater and Miss Reina. It'll have the period on there. And you tell me what period you are in. And then you're going to give me your last name, comma, your first name. Remember, um, writing your name like this with your last name first really helps me to sort out uh, you y'all's work while I am grading. So if you could really make sure that your last name is um, written first and then your first name, that would be super helpful to me. Thank you. And so today we have a video for you to watch. And so this is another video from the famous Charlie Chaplin, great pantomimer. And so um, once you watch this video, when you click play, you are going to tell me what you think the big problem for the two characters was. What were they doing or trying to do? And what was the big risk? What was the bad thing that might happen if they can't get what they want? So go ahead and tell me. And then how do you think you know? What actions was he doing? Was Charlie Chaplin and his um, co-star doing that told you or that helped you to um, make an inference or a guess about what the problem was? What was he doing with his body or face that helped you to understand what was going on in the video? If you need to take some time to think about your answer and watch the video, go ahead and click pause now. Um, once you're ready, you can come back and we'll go on to the next part of the assignment. Once you have given me your answer and have um, told me, answered these two questions, what was the big problem and how do we know, you can click next. So to review from our uh, day one of pantomime, Remember that when we are trying to communicate or tell a story using pantomime, your body, your physical body and your movements are your primary forms of communication. You use your body to tell a story um, by using it to create eye contact and facial expressions and gestures, which we talked about yesterday. And then today we are going to practice using tempo and rhythm and then proximity and physical contact. So again, you have your info check question. What is the primary form of communication in pantomime? Is it your voice, your mind, your body, or all three? Which is the best answer? Before we get started on our exercises today, you are going to select at least two to three exercises to do to warm up and um, stretch. And so you can choose ones from the poster and then tell me um, using check boxes, which ones you did. And so make sure um, arm rotations are an easy one to do. Um, sit and reach or toe touch. Remember that's just you um, trying to increase your flexibility by bending over and trying to touch your toes. Those are good ones to do. And so, like I said, um, two or three of them is enough for today. Tell me which ones you did. Our first exercise is going to be tempo and rhythm. So tempo refers to how fast or how slow something is happening. Um, and rhythm refers to a strong repeated pattern. So a lot of times we think about rhythm in music or songs. And um, you think of kind of like the beat that's in the background of the song. And so Rhythm also can relate to movements that we are doing, right? Um, our own movement has patterns. If you really stopped and paid attention 
Um, you might notice um, the pattern like when you walk, how quickly you walk, how many steps you take, um, how big your steps are. All of those things, all of these small behaviors add up to different patterns that we as humans um, do all the time without thinking about it. And so your first exercise is going to be um, to pretend to hold an invisible ball. And so what you will be doing for this exercise is you will be pretending to throw that ball up and catch it. And so um, as you are going along at home, you're going to watch my video example that I have here so that you can practice along with me. Um, if you need some time to play this video, go ahead and pause the video you are watching right now. And then once you are done, you can move on to your reflection question. Why or was it easier to toss the ball for you faster or slower? And why? Um, you can also tell me about what, um, what type of ball you chose. So let's say you chose to pretend you were throwing a basketball versus a bowling ball or another kind of ball. Um, which one was easier, a smaller or a larger ball? Uh, just tell me about your experience doing the exercise along with me. Once you are done, you will move on to exercise number four, which is uh, physical contact and proximity. So physical contact is anytime, basically anytime your body touches something else, whether it is somebody else, another person's body, like when you high five and your hands touch, that's physical contact. Um, when you are sitting in the chair, in a chair, and you can feel your legs and your bottom touching the chair, that is physical contact. Uh, basically, anytime your body uh, touches something else, that's physical contact. And so physical contact is very important with pantomime because it lets uh, the audience know what objects are close to you, what objects or people might be touching you, um, as well as proximity. So proximity, when it comes to pantomime, is talking about how close to you something is. So those two things go hand in hand, right? Because if it's touching you, that means it's close to you. And so um, we want to give our audience, because pantomime um, doesn't you're only using your body. There's no extra stuff there to help the audience see what you're doing. Um, we want to use all the clues that we can to help the audience understand what story we're trying to tell. And that includes physical contact and proximity. So for this exercise, you're going to be doing um, the mime box. So it's kind of like what you think of. It's going to be an easier version of um, what you think of when you think of a mime like right, the guy who's like stuck in the box. And so you are going to practice uh, pretending that you are stuck inside of a box. And so um, there is a video here for you to watch from me so that you can practice with. Once you watch the video and practice it, you can tell me about your experience. What was challenging about the box for you? Um, was it challenging? Uh, did you feel silly? Which I'm sure some of you might, and that's okay, you know? We are just getting used to moving our bodies around. Um, and so as long as you try and as long as you put your best effort into answering your reflection question, you will be good for this lesson. Um, the last thing that you have to do for this lesson before um, turning it in is answering your exit ticket. So you are gonna tell me in your own words, how do you communicate in pantomime? How do you let the audience know what story it is you are trying to tell. Uh, just tell me in your own words. I want to hear your thoughts and I'm excited to see what your definition of communicating in pantomime really is. Um, once you're done answering this question, you will go ahead and click submit and you are done with your intro to pantomime day two assignments. Um, go ahead and work on it, start working on it now if you haven't. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you all know that you can always reach out to me by commenting on Google Classroom, uh, emailing me, uh, messaging me on Remind, or um, just asking questions in our live sessions during the day. Um, that's it for today, you guys. Uh, remember, today is a great day. You are in control of you. And every day is a new day to try your best. 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye.